petroleum-based in-flight fires are something very different and very dangerous as compared to an electrical fire. The most important thing to consider about an in-flight petroleum-based fire is, once you recognize it as such, you must stop your engine. That's right. You reach over and grab that throttle, pull it back, and leave it back. Period. And then you pull the mixture control back and shut the engine down. And turn the boost pump off if it's on, too. And most important here, you want to make sure your fuel selector is turned to the off position. Your objective is to keep the fuel from being directed to where the fire is. And the second thing you do is to close your air vents to make sure that none of the smoke and the toxic effluvium gets into the cockpit, which wouldn't be a good thing for you. The third thing you would do is turn off your master switch if it's on. It's entirely possible that your airplane's avionics cooling fans take air from outside the airplane, as most do, and pump it over the electrical equipment. And that means there's a possibility that these avionic fans might pump smoke into the cockpit, which is no bueno for you. Now, you must find a way to extinguish the fire. A fire extinguisher is probably not going to help in this instance since the fire is in front of the firewall where the engine is. So, the best way to extinguish the fire is by speeding the airplane up. No, not to blow out the fire, but to increase the airflow so much that the burning fuel-air mixture becomes too lean to continue burning. In some of their POHs, Cessna says that in order to extinguish the fire, you're looking at speeding up to a minimum of 100 knots and more if this speed fails to extinguish the fire. The objective here is to change the mixture of the fire. In other words, to add more air for a given fuel source which leans the mixture sufficiently to extinguish the flames. I have a test pilot friend who used to fly DC-6s for the military. He once had the duty to discover what minimum dive speed was necessary to extinguish a cavitated engine fire. He would take the airplane up and purposely ignite a prearranged package that would burn under an engine cowling. He discovered that he had to fly at a minimum of 130 knots to extinguish the fire. It's reasonable to assume that the faster you go, the more likely you are to extinguish the fire. Remember, you're not trying to slow down to prevent the fire from getting air. Clearly, it's getting enough air as is. You want to give it as much air as possible to extinguish it by leaning its mixture to the point where combustion is impossible. The next thing you should be thinking is, how can I get this airplane out of the sky as soon as possible and where is the best place to put it down? Have you ever practiced getting an airplane out of the sky in the shortest possible period of time? Well, how would you do this? Yes, full flaps might be one way, except if the maximum flap extension speed is 125 knots, it wouldn't be wise to exceed this speed during an emergency descent and end up with a split flap condition in addition to an in-flight fire. In smaller airplanes, such as the Cessna 150, the maximum forward indicated airspeed at which you can fly with full flaps extended is 85 knots, which is slower than the speed Cessna recommends to extinguish the fire. And please keep in mind that should you elect to use flaps with the master switch off, you might have to turn it back on to use those flaps. The next way to do this is with the gear down. Remember, you might have to temporarily put the master switch on in order to lower the gear. Wait, what happens if you exceed the gear's maximum operating speed during the descent? My answer is, who cares? You see, excess speed typically won't hurt the gear. What it will hurt are your gear doors. But you aren't concerned about the gear doors at the moment, are you? Of course not. What about slipping the airplane? Yes, you can descend quickly and slip while doing it. The slip will increase the drag, allowing for an increased descent rate. And you could do this by applying a little aileron and opposite rudder pedal as appropriate. Slipping is especially useful when you have a fire on one wing or flames and smoke are exiting the cowling on one side. Slipping allows you to keep the flames and smoke away from the cockpit. Now, what about putting the airplane in a 45 to 60 degree bank during the descent? Yes, this is an excellent way to lose altitude quickly, too. 
So, you might put the gear down if you have retractable gear and maybe apply some small degree of flaps. Of course, there's a good chance that you'll exceed the flaps maximum operating speed if you do. Then again, I'd be willing to risk this at 20 to 25 percent of flap extension since it's unlikely that you'll collapse the flap structure at this level of deflection. I certainly wouldn't apply more flaps than this knowing that I'll exceed VFE. Applying a slight slip while you are banking at an angle of up to 60 degrees at your desired descent speed should help you get on with the business of getting down quickly. Now keep in mind here that banking at 60 degrees is not a spin. We're not talking about spinning here because the airspeed in a spin typically stabilizes at some slower speed such as 75 knots in small airplanes. Besides, the last thing you want to do to yourself is put yourself in a spin while you're on fire. Good golly, this is not a way to treat yourself even if you have been naughty lately. Our objective here is to get the airplane down quickly and safely so you can get out of it. What I want you to be keenly aware of is that if your engine is on fire, then you're committed to a power off emergency landing, period. There are no if ands or buts about it. And no, there's no restarting an engine that was on fire just to make it to the airport either. This is an emergency situation where you are no longer allowed to use your engine. There are a few other things that we haven't talked about during this emergency descent. I'm speaking of cowl flaps. Should we open them or close them? Yes, open them. More airflow through the engine compartment is exactly what you need. If you have a controllable pitch propeller, which way should you move the prop control? Forward or aft? Yes, you're getting all the answers correct. Full forward. Why? Propellers running at their maximum allowable RPM give you maximum disc drag. Therefore, you'll be able to descend much faster. If you don't think this is true, then place yourself in an airplane in a power-off descent and slowly move the prop control full aft. You'll feel the airplane accelerate as you do. Now, slowly move the prop control full forward. Remember, you don't want to overspeed the propeller during your experiment here. You'll feel the airplane slow down as the drag increases. Try this sometime and you will really be impressed at the different descent rates that you obtain. All right. For our next maneuver, we're going to simulate getting this airplane out of the air in the shortest period of time. So I want to make sure there's nobody below me, so I'm going to make a clearing turn here. All right. So how would I do that? Getting the airplane out of the air in the shortest period of time. Power back. Now I could add flaps, but I won't do that in this situation. Watch this. Nose down. I'm going to bank the airplane. I'm going to put it into a good 60 degree bank, and I'm letting that speed increase. And my descent rate now is phenomenal. Now I haven't even increased the speed above what I could increase. In other words, I could go all the way up to VME here. This gets the airplane out of the air in a very short period of time.